I'm Lynn Manuel Miranda, and you're listening to Hard Knock Life. Welcome to Hard Knock Life. I am Keith Chow. I'm Brittany Monet. I'm Dominic Ma. Hey, you know, we usually record these shows on Sunday afternoons, and I had the brilliant idea. Well, the Emmys are a Sunday night, and this is going to be a record-breaking Emmy showcase because I think the most POC ever nominated for the, the major categories, the acting categories. All of the nerd shit got nominated this year. You know, WandaVision led all categories. The Mandalorian had a shit ton of nominations. The Boys was even nominated. Like, this is going to be like the most knockiest Emmys ever. And so we said, let's wait till Monday morning to record because we're going to have a lot of stuff to talk about. And then I watched the ceremony and the fucking crown won everything. (laughs) It's all white people. Michaela Cole was like the only non-white person to win anything. And uh, we have nothing to talk about. Emmy So White is basically where we are. So yeah. didn't have to get up early today is what I'm saying. And I apologize. That's fine. Um, I watch the Emmys regardless of what nerdy stuff is uh, <laughs> nominated because I'm one of those people. But yeah, to be clear, the WandaVision was nominated in the limited series anthology series slash made for TV movies category. So that it was not in the same category as the crown before anyone's like, well, of course it lost to the crown. I just right, want to make right. that like just clear, just in case anyone. Although the Mandalorian that. was in that category. Yes, right? the Mandalorian yeah. was in the category with the crown, which is like, oh, but just to even be nominated with the show about like the royal family <laughs> is like weird and wild and cool. Like it's nice, I think, to finally see critics are like accepting that, you know, things that come from nerd culture is actually there's actually good stuff out there and i know not everything is great and like we can all agree that there's some stuff that you know just not good but i think the fact that they are starting to get on board with like okay this can really be an effective means of storytelling just as well as the crown basically you know like that's that's in itself is just like a huge like win for you know anything nerdy basically yeah no it was it was it was almost like cognitive dissonance you know when they show the clips of the the nominated yeah. shows or the nominated performances and it was like you know jillian anderson being margaret thatcher being all serious and then whatever the other fucking shows were <laughs> and it was like a crate dragon <laughs> and like a bounty yeah. hunter like throwing shit at a crate dragon it's like oh yeah the star wars thing got nominated that's funny and it was cool i mean you know like like you said it was a pleasure just to be nominated but beyond the the nerd shit like i was expecting at least some brown people to win something you know and it was just a little kind of off-putting that every time the category came up and it was like some rando from the crown wins again and i think the one i was most upset about and you know i i know he died like way after voting was completed and i'm not saying he deserved to win because he died but like i think he deserved to win you know just because he was such a great and talented actor and his performance and Lovecraft Country was amazing, but Michael K. Williams, I thought, was going to win Best Supporting Actor, and then Toby Menzies won. And and someone made the I forget the the person on social media who said this, but it was very reminiscent of when Anthony Hopkins won out over Chadwick at the Oscars because like Toby Menzies wasn't even there, <laughs> and it was like I yeah, mean, they should have just given it yeah. to him. <laughs> but they it's two they, in a row. I will say this: the Oscars really was benefiting off of chadwick versus yeah. what the emmys did because like you know normally for the oscars best picture is the last thing that you see when they're doing their award ceremony they not only like had like nft things <laughs> made of chadwick they like moved the best, the best actor actor category <laughs> to be the last, last <laughs> because they assumed chadwick was gonna win and they like they were like really like oh yeah chad was gonna win blah 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 and it's just like maybe the, like i said i think when we recorded around that time this was like the one instance to like you know maybe check that category before <laughs> Open doing the all that. Yeah. yes to make sure you're not making a fucking fool out sorry excuse me no, uh, okay. make it a fool out of yourself <laughs> because they did like he he didn't win it and then in this instance they kept saying you know we want to make sure everyone knows that this voting was done before 
he like you know before Michael K. Williams died like this was done way before that there was none none of that like of, of going into consideration and they didn't change the order of the award. Right. <laughs> they didn't hand out NFTs of his you know face and or you know so like I will say it's not exactly the same because sure, these right. movies weren't trying to like a, you know get extra views and stuff out of it you know they weren't exploiting yeah. Michael K. Williams exactly the way the academy yeah. exploited Chadwick yes. for sure but it was that it was the same kind of like you know the guy wasn't even there to accept the award you know yeah. what i mean and it's just that, yeah that. but they wouldn't let anthony hopkins um accept via like uh skype or whatever he's older right. he's older and um he was worried about covid like I, when you hear that it's really messed up that they weren't going to make accommodations for anthony hopkins like why wouldn't you make accommodations for anthony hopkins like he's <laughs> well, anthony no one hopkins. thought he was going to win though that <laughs> like that's that's where we're that's, like with the, that's true with the but best it's like actor. he's He's, you know, like it's understandable. An older man does not want to travel and, you know, in the middle of a pandemic, like. Well, you know, that's a good point too. And and Dominic, I don't know how much you actually watched the ceremony, but it was a very, very tightly packed room of unmasked people. And I was just wondering, like, and I'm sure they were all vaccinated, right? But still very small room, very tightly packed. I think Seth Rogen even made a comment about, oh shit, like no one here is wearing a mask and we're all shoulder to shoulder. But yeah. as as someone who is very cognizant of the pandemic and all of the things around it, like what do you feel about even having these kinds of uh, ceremonies again? And, you know, Sunday was NFL football day and all the stadiums were <laughs> back to the gills again. So like, like half the country it's like the pandemic isn't happening and then the other half of the country is dying. So like, where are you in this weird flux liminal space of the uh, third version? Of yeah. The it was kind of the golden Globes setup, right? Isn't that how they do in the golden Globes with a bunch yes, of and dinner party yes. tables? The that? Emmys are normally not set up like that. The Emmys are normally like regular, like theater and auditorium yeah. thing. Yeah. For one thing, I don't know what they were trying to, show by that like it's not really safer it's just a different way of arranging the chairs i mean uh, uh, i mean it's not packed to the gills obviously anyway but whatever i didn't watch very much of it i did like that they started with that big biz marquee number and then it was all white from there and <laughs> did anyone wear a cool outfit or anything i really didn't watch too much out um, the i liked all of cedric's uh jacket changes and stuff i really enjoyed that I can't think of anyone how to really like super like yes, your dress is so nice. Well, I think Bowen Yang's shoes won the night. Oh, you saw, oh, you saw yeah, his, like those, silver those, platinum, those silver platinum yes. boots. Yes, those were wonderful. Those are pretty cool. But you I want to say like that you they totally could have given the award to <laughs> Michael K. Williams. <laughs> they. Um, so I wish presenters say, would make more audibles like in we the know, yeah we know we know they give awards to people for a legacy of for of of for a body of work on the year when they pr- kind of deserve it even if they could just they really could have done that and they could have done that twice to me well, I think it's, probably get a post like humus way post humus one like and sometime we're honoring Michael K. Williams it's like well he's dead now why are you doing it? they could have done <laughs> right. it yeah but well, I, I wonder, think- is it possible, like, can a presenter, like, call an audible and, like, don't get checked on it and just, like, walk off stage? <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, and then who, because really, who's going to, the like, presenter is the person who does Well, it. I'm just saying that, like, if, if Kerry Washington would have read the thing and said, oh, this dude's not even fucking here. Michael K. Williams is the winner. And, like, who's going to check her on oh, that? They, that, probably, that? They probably do check. <laughs> that would be funny. They that that would be check. bold. They probably have, like, someone who has a list of, like, making sure this Start is Start freaking out. Which yeah. is the, what happened with Especially Moonlight, after, I think. Yeah. 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 But well, yeah, that's because they gave him the wrong envelope. Too. That's so <laughs> embarrassing. Like, I would hate to have been the person who gave the wrong envelope. Yeah. But seriously, I mean, just echoing all of what you said, what what have we gained over the year? But the fucking crown? I don't give a shit. I'm sure it's great. I'm sure the crown is great. I don't give a fucking shit. Um, <laughs> I, I personally don't like hacks. I don't like hacks a lot. Seen it. Mm. So it's so, you know, I mean, it's not just like, you know, a big white racist institution. Let's just talk about a very, a, a very closed insular institution which 
likes to give awards to movies about movies and television about television. Hacks is just about people working in television. Right. It's an extraordinarily obnoxious show. It 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 is great if you happen to work in television. <laughs> um and yeah, I don't know, but WandaVision is the Marvel one that is about television. Right. <laughs> How can you That's get more incest That's probably why it honestly yeah. got so many noms. Too, yeah. When you think about it is because it honors uh previous his years of TV and they nailed it so well. I'm honestly surprised mm. that they didn't get the directing one for the live audience episode because they filmed that in front of a live audience and did all yeah, that true. like old school wire work and stuff. Like I'm re- that I'm more surprised that that didn't get at least like a directing win just because that was done so well that yeah. episode. Um, and one division picked up a few like last week during the creative, the creative Emmys, Emmys, right? Yes. So like I when I say they had they led the pack, I mean like like as at the uh, Oscars. Most of the time when the nerd shit gets nominated, it's in all of the like the technical awards. It's never really mm-hmm. in the creative. Although I think WandaVision had some creative, to your point, some of the directors, some of the writers. And I think Catherine Hahn was nominated. Yes. And so, so was Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany, which um, I know Ian McGregor won that category. And I'm sorry, Ian McGregor, I have not seen that show. Yeah. Has on, anyone seen a Halston? Of, My mom a lot had, of people say has that watched show Halston. Is not oh, yeah. Great. I'd never heard of it. I didn't even know it was a thing. It, Again, it's just about Halston. That's <laughs> the kind of thing that Emmy, uh, the Emmy structure is there to give awards for. And yeah. but I mean, also like television has changed so much in the last couple of years. I mean, they need a new one of these shows. I mean, yeah. Uh, for one thing, like sucks to be like working on one of those shows that are just like a regular network. Like, did any show that was just like an Only NBC this show? Is us. Only this is us. Yeah, because that's the only show that I think is putting out. I haven't watched it in a long time, but. I just remember that was one of the only shows of like quality coming out from network because there I feel like yeah. the network shows are paying the actors more to be on these shows versus mm-hmm. like putting in enough money to have like a show that has a decent budget where everything actually looks nice. And but then like broadcast TV is mostly just cop shows set in chicago now you know what i mean like, there are a lot of those there's still a lot of yes, chicago cop shows yeah csi las csi las vegas is coming back so. csi <laughs> ad infinitum right yeah. like there is a fine line between what is streaming and what is mm-hmm. tv now right because netflix can win emmys and oscars now apparently because there's no distinction between what is in well, Netflix HBO ain't. technically can too because of HBO Max. So yeah, God damn they're going to be in that. <laughs> I mean, a good example of something Brittany, you and I were talking about right before is mm-hmm. as as much as I'm a Hamilton stan, I did feel like it winning best variety show was weird <laughs> because yes. one, it's a pro shot recording of a four year old performance on Broadway uh-huh. that. You know, I mean, I think intended it to be released in theaters, but because right. of the pandemic, Disney was like, well, "Let's be nice and give the people something." Like, <laughs> which is awesome. Yeah, which so is the, awesome. Yes. The category was supposed to be a movie. <laughs> is what the category was, right? Yeah, it's supposed and to be in theaters, but no. I love Lynn. Don't get me wrong; I am not a Lynn hater, but we I was even that. I was. Yeah, everyone. I'm wearing a shirt even now. Everyone, I think, was surprised. Surprised but not shocked that Hamilton won because I think also mm-hmm. along with like Emmy voters they they probably just chose the thing that was the most recognizable, you know. But I, and, and I don't know if you don't watch the other stuff. Though. Well, that's what I was gonna say. Like I think the the thing that should have won that category is something mm-hmm. that I've been personally obsessed with over the last several months, and it's Bo Burnham's Inside, which was a, like a comedy special unlike any other comedy special that he filmed over the course of the year of the pandemic in his own mm-hmm. home which is like an amazing, you know, as a variety show, it means music, it's comedy, it's, you know, anxiety and angst, like all wrapped up into one. And it's really well done. Uh, and it's just surprising that 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 didn't win. And I think that's the consensus for most people was that that should have won. But of course, you know, Hamilton being the, the big name, yeah. the big the big brand. But at the same time, it was like the only thing that was not white people <laughs> that that won and Michaela yeah, Cole won best writer for a yes, limited series so that was add a, a, that it's like something that was from years ago that technically won like I like you I really do like Hamilton I love everyone involved but like 
you know yeah i was like this shouldn't be winning it's just weird for it to win now (laughs) but i do want to make in terms of like deadline stuff and like deadline for nominations the movie it it came out after last year's emmys so that's why i wasn't nominated for the emmys last year though it it made it in time for the golden globes but that's why it's here for the emmys this time around so that's happens to a lot of shows too or like made for tv movies that like get released in that dead space like oh well it was really popular when it came out but now it's like it's not like you know like it's that happens a lot and it it doesn't help that pop culture moves at the speed of light because like the things i mean even wandavision right like it feels like like six years ago and it was only six months ago yeah. yeah, freaking Queen's Gambit, I think I think is highly overrated, I, but it was a big deal. What? What? <laughs> it's highly what? overrated. What? what? <laughs> so I'm glad it got that a show is great. award. Well, that's an example of a high rating. <laughs> you said that? overrated. That show is really good. I well, love Queen's Gambit. I, man, it's not it's not my thing. I did find fine. it. I, there okay, was, I was a variety a chess club, so like, Oh, there you go. There was a variety article <clears> that that talked about you know emmy's so white and the lack of representation in the winners and did call anya taylor joy latina even though yes she's from latin america but i don't think she's actually latina but we won't go into that (laughs) i I think people are well whatever (laughs) the the, you know i think we're being a little too precious about how we decide how we call Anya Taylor Joy. I think I'm she, pretty sure Anya Taylor Joy does. Person. She may be able to speak Spanish and is from like Argentina or something, right? But like, yes. Yeah, so anyway, anyway, uh, anyway. Yeah, I, I'm not leaping up to say that makes her <laughs> this or that. Had she like, won, I don't know that like the Latino community would have been like, oh, we're finally represented. There's but. there's people who claim her. I know. Oh, really? Yeah. People who claim. I know lots of nice people who claim her. So oh, not okay. to like throw them I'm under sorry. the bus or anything. I apologize. So, I, I I was just surprised so, <laughs> that, that, like you know, like there, for example, there are the, some la- parts of Latino communities that are not com- claimed by other Latinos. Who well, that's true too. It's, I mean, it's, yeah. it's 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 the same thing as Asians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in, in that I can speak confidently. It is the same thing as Asians. <laughs> sure. If Anya Taylor Joy was from Groups like don't like each other. If Anya Taylor Joy was from like Taiwan or Hong Kong or something, I'm sure we would have been like claiming her too if she was born there as well. Anyway, that's I the end of the Wait, no, 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 no. There you go. We cannot. We, we didn't mean to speak on Mare of Easttown. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> we cannot kidding. brush over one of my favorite shows. Ah, uh, yes. Ted Lasso. Jason Sudeikis. Yeah. I love it's... Jason Sudeikis, but my favorite character actor on the show, he won for Best Supporting Actor, is Brett Goldstein. He is so great as Roy Kent. I love Roy Kent. He's um, amazing. As a lot of people have noticed, a lot of women love uh Roy Kent like even my mom started watching the show she's like eyebrows one that's what she calls Roy <laughs> Kent so um I was really excited and they actually had um Nick Mohammed on the show is also nominated everyone in that category is so good I was so sad like all three of them were up against each other um I was actually surprised that any of them won because I assumed they would just split the vote to be honest like whenever there's yeah. like a, a- uh, like four or five people from the same show it you would yes. it would stand to reason that the one person that's not on the show would be the win- winner just because they split the votes but yeah but no uh brett is just really 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 great on the show um that's i know for some people who try to watch the first episode and they're like oh it's kind of boring power on to the next episode because like it's it's really good um i always give shows like a three episode uh try and that's it like i gave new girl three episode try that's hated sensible. it um <laughs> so yeah i give things a three episode try you guys should too because as you can tell so many people love ted loss and it's really about a guy who is like trying his best to be good and then trying to you know obviously do his job well and i feel like that's why so many people love the show because it's all these people really are just trying their best to be the their best selves within their circumstances and it's so cute and endearing and funny and some of the there's maybe one character on the show who's really just a straight up asshole. And you're like, oh, fuck that guy. <laughs> but you know, every like, show needs that, though. Yeah, but it's it's really sweet. And like, I know someone else compared it to like Avatar, um, The Last Airbender and Steven. Oh, Steven Un- yeah, they're like good you know, people in the world. It's about good people in the world trying their best to do goodness. And like and so I really feel like a lot of people will like it. And watching the character um, that Nick Muhammad plays, his, his, his name is Nate. He starts off as the team's like kit mate, kit man or whatever they call it. 
like to see his journey is very interesting and I think they're doing some very interesting stuff with him in season two so one thing I didn't realize about Ted Lasso is that it's mm-hmm. the show itself is based on like a skit from like I don't know if it was a Saturday Night Live skit or just like an NBC sports skit but there's like a YouTube video of Jason Sudeikis playing Ted Lasso from like mm-hmm. on NBC sports like YouTube channel from like nine years ago because I thought it was like a mistake. I was like, did the algorithm mess up or something? Like, no, this was like a short video of him doing a skit as an American football coach, coaching a, a European football team. Yeah. And I think that's the premise of the show yes, was actually yes, from yes. this like mini skit from like 10 years ago, which is I thought was, that I, makes I was sense. very surprised. Yeah, that is the premise of the show. And it's very funny because he coached American football at an amateur level level. Right. So and did- and I know because I have seen the pilot. I've seen the first yes. episode. And I know that he's only hired because like they want him to fail. The yes, the the what the lady who won on the show, Hannah Wingdam, uh, she ha- oh, runs the team and she's basically trying to get back at her ex husband, yeah. <laughs> um, and ruin the football club because that's the only thing he loves is Richmond Football Club. So she wants to ruin them, and they're like basically one of the top. Uh, they're supposed to be in like the Premier League, which is like professional league, basically. And she wants to, you know, watch the club like burn down. So she hires Ted Lasso, but he's like that guy who's like, you know, so nice and always trying his best that like, you <laughs> know, anything, anything that she does, he's kind of like, oh, well, that's all right, boss. Like, <laughs> it's really funny. I will. Pro- I promise I will get around to it. I, I have seen the first episode and I enjoyed it. It was just not something that I was like in a hurry to catch up on but again now mm-hmm. that it's gotten all this buzz it's in the second season i will i will do my best it's the I one wanted... show that everyone is like it's great is actually great sorry dom yeah <laughs> i just realized we could use the raising hand system we could have been doing that this whole time <laughs> um, I, that was that was like i want to talk within 30 seconds not like not like doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be immediately <laughs> I just want to add some Mia Culpas too, because we just like complained about the thing for like 20 minutes. I mean, yeah, Ted Lasso was obviously the one that we could root for in good faith. Uh, also British though. We, like, they love British things. Okay, we, <laughs> or, or set in But Jason Sudeikis is one of the head writers. So yeah. like. It's British-esque. Let's say. Yes, it's British-esque. I mean, I mean, they love things which are British-esque. Is, yeah. is the crown really about British people? I don't know. I still, <laughs> I still don't know what the crown is about. That actually like ran by British people. <laughs> And uh, some women, uh, some women won uh, the directing awards, which is a big deal because that's really a big barrier. Yeah, yeah. To, in, yeah. You know, in direct positions, and that's good. And I also want to say I I do like Poppy Lou's character in Hacks. She's the blackjack dealer, and she's very good. And that doesn't help anything like about uh, me complaining about Hacks. I just want to say that <laughs> honestly. Uh, good character on this show. I can't stand. Um, but you watched it. I haven't even watched. I did watch Gene Smart well, in Mayor of Easttown. Gene and Smart I quite, is great. Quite and, and liked also, Mayor of Easttown. So I Gene was glad. Smart that is one. wonderful. Good. Good for her. Uh, Ralph Boner won. Yeah, uh, Evan exactly. Peters. That was pretty. Yes, that's Evan. close enough to a WandaVision win, I think. Yeah, everyone's laughing. Oh, yeah. They're like saying he finally got free of the um, the Ryan Murphy machine, and he won <laughs> his first award. Yeah. <laughs> did you guys watch Mayor of Easttown? I did. I have it. I really want to watch oh, it, but I I won't spoil the yeah what happens reason why he <laughs> okay. gets that award. But I will. Uh, I, I I do appreciate it as someone who lives not quite in the you know Delco region of Pennsylvania, but close enough that the Baltimore Maryland accent is very similar to the oh, Philadelphia yeah. Delaware accent. They everyone on that show does it a one job on a on the yeah. accent <laughs> and again that <laughs> was is... one of those shows that really like at least had a working class vibe even as people doing performance i mean we talk so much about the racial and sexual things i mean you couldn't get more fucking classist than the shows the crown and hacks they're just <laughs> fucking about fucking rich people problems right i i can't like i don't i can't care well, <laughs> well you know it's funny that like you know people have i have seen some criticism of mayor of east town as it's supposed to be this you know working class show but kate winslet's character lives in like a two-story you know mansion or whatever and like it's, it's slow your roll the houses are they're, they're they may be big but i'm pretty sure the market rate for those houses are now like a, a house that size in california yeah it's like five million dollars but a house that size 
out in a small mm, town yeah. in Pennsylvania is it's like a hundred yeah, grand. You know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah, I get that. Property value. But are, at least they're trying to have the sure. vibe. <laughs> I mean, yes, they're going to get the details wrong because they're going to have the like the nicest poor looking house they can get in, <laughs> in an HBO show. But it's not like the other HBO show, which is Hacks, which is about you know a super rich Vegas, lady living yeah. in Las Vegas and. The young person's problem is that they had bought a house with TV writer money and now maybe can't pay for it. Oh my God. <laughs> what a terrible, but terrible I, situation. The only thing I think about that is that not everyone in who writes in TV has money to like buy a big ass mansion. That's my only thing. Too. Yeah, that's, <laughs> like, it's it's even it, more a silly fantasy for that. Yeah, because there's so many people who write and work in TV that do not make as much money as people like to think Mm -hmm. and I think that's that's also another like issue with like what people view of people who work in the industry like not everyone is making all that money to like have nice shit like I mean that's the thing too like all three of us are like that's definitely the argument they're trying to go for for hacks I just happen to believe well and I think the three the quality of the show too I'm sure but the three of us are all like entertainment industry adjacent if not necessarily directly working in there and yeah. and I think that's absolutely right. I think there is a perception that even, you know, there's some working actors that that have, you know, their faces on everything, but like they they still live paycheck to paycheck basically, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think there is a there is a misperception or misconception about, you know, your status in Hollywood is automatically equal to like riches and fame. You know what I mean? Like that's not the case yeah. for like your your day to day work working you know writer director actor right like everyone is still working class even if they're working in Hollywood yeah um, and there's there's a good story there but what happens in hacks is then she just goes <laughs> to Las Vegas and lives in a mansion with someone who has a private belt lactic dealer and then complains about it yeah that's her new problem is she's living in a mansion in Las Vegas it's it's fucking stupid <laughs> that's all like yeah. hacks really hurt you didn't it dominic <clears throat> well i take it a little personally <laughs> um and i do really like Shane smart and i love poppy lou's character so i should probably stop talking about it yeah well there you go well maybe maybe they'll hire you to write on season two and you can bring it bring it turn it around <laughs> turn that ship around yeah. well that's enough emmy right. talk we 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 will put the pin there i did want to get to two disney marvel things before we wrap for today, one is the Hawkeye trailer, oh, which yes. we didn't get to talk about last week. Uh, what did we think of Haley Steinfeld as Kate Bishop? I will say also in the in the wake of Shang-Chi, another Asian-American Marvel superhero, by the way. Uh, I, I wonder if Haley will claim her Filipino heritage now. I don't know. <laughs> we go back and forth on, on how Filipina she is. She's also a quarter black, according to the internet sources, <laughs> right? <laughs> Those so, three words, according to the internet, is uh, four words. Is usually- well, that's what I'm seeing. Again, sort of related to the Taylor Joy thing. Like, I, I think people should obviously... Should. <laughs> Celebrities are really under the gun, you know, to, especially yeah. if they're like a white passing person mm-hmm. with a diverse... <laughs> background which a lot of people are so like you know but i, I am curious about like I, I think asians are pretty hot to claim at least i feel i don't know <laughs> no i don't i don't know if the black people are not like not um, not like i don't know anything about black like, i don't know i, I it's a people very claiming complicated people. thing because of like the if you're more I think some people are like, oh, well, if you're 80% white, you're more white than like yeah. anything. They won't claim you. So I don't know. It's just, it's a, and it, of course, it really depends, I think, on right. individuals because you know, then, you want people who claim the long other people history of people who are like, especially women who are passing in society and have yeah, black yeah, ancestors, yeah. that dynamic is totally different from like us going, oh, she's a quarter Filipino, so she must be Asian. Right, right. right. I mean, that those two dynamics are radically different. Like, and I think there's also some like, problematic you know ideas behind just claiming in general right because i think part of the discourse around being mixed race is that you don't have to be half one half the other or part this part that you're like you're all of the identities too right like there's it's 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 it's, i think it's you know we get into like the whole racial draft of it all sometimes and it can be racial draft is weird it can be it can be a little problem but other other than that i'm a big fan of the matt fraction book and you know they take not sure how much of the story they're taking from the book but at least it's set in new york which i wasn't sure they were going to do at least there's the tracksuit gang which is pretty cool maybe kingpin will be in this who knows uh, uh and, he and there's it. he's like the you didn't see that 
Vincent D'Onofrio liked the tweet saying he's in the show. Oh, really? Wow, yes. fascinating. That's awesome. Fascinating. <laughs> That's and awesome. Everyone's like, what's going on with all these Marvel actors? Like, kind of breaking their NDA. <laughs> and Lucky the Pizza Dog is in it. So I am 100% on board. They're using the David Asia logo mm-hmm. for Hawkeye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if, if it's not directly lifting elements from the Matt Fraction book, it's it's trying to hint that it, it's going that direction. One, are you guys familiar and fans of, of that run? And two, what do you think of this trailer? And, you know, I'm not the biggest Jeremy Renner fan to begin with, so it's kind of weird to be excited for a Hawkeye show. That's how exactly how I feel. I've read <laughs> a couple of uh, Matt Fraction's uh, Hawkeye. I'm more familiar with his Immortal Iron Fist yeah. because that's like my favorite run of iron fist um but that being said i think lifting stuff from matt fraction is a really good idea because i think he's really one of the talented actually like white dudes in comics you know (laughs) so i'm really excited to see how much they take from that i only read a couple i think i read maybe four issues at most i want to say of that run and i meant to always go back to it but then i forgot my password to marvel unlimited and (laughs) and i remembered it now but now i have like we've all been there well, no, let's make a deal, Brittany. I will finish <laughs> Ted Lasso if you finish the Matt Fraction run on Hawkeye. Damn. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a win win. You're both going to gain culture. Exactly. From that. There you go. Right? I think um, it's no, good for everybody. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. I wasn't really excited for it at first. I was like, mm, it's not going to be. It's, you know, Jeremy Renner. Blah, blah, blah. But now I'm like, okay, this actually looks really fun. And he actually looks like he's having a good time in this. So I feel like that will be a little bit better to watch and i don't know if anyone else noticed it looks like he has a hearing aid in one of the shots yeah mm-hmm. so we'll see i really like the die hard vibe and <laughs> i what I was your it. hashtag die hard with avengers that was yeah, it's, awesome it's die hard with <laughs> avengers i <laughs> love that hashtag. we don't so no, the third die hard movie was called die hard with avengers yeah, exactly. for no particular reason <laughs> so that's really what it looked like christmas and everything and none of that's in new york again i'm sick of all this fucking going mm. to like surreal wandavision land it's just in new york in christmas that's just great yeah but mainly i just i wanted to talk about the Kylie steinfeld situation because at the risk of sounding weird fawning over a cool young celebrity, I like Kylie Stenfield a whole lot. Oh, she's really talented. <laughs> she's, she's awesome. Great. Her performance, her first, one of her first performances in, you know, the Coen Brothers' True Grit is just one of the great things. In she has an Oscar nomination time. for that. Yes, she, she does. She should have gotten seven. It's one of one the of best the, things yeah. in movies that has ever happened. Yeah, this I never kid. saw that particular movie, but I've seen, you know, some of the, her other stuff and she's so good. I yeah. I love her. She's and good in everything she's been in, yeah. Yeah, yeah and then she, 17 is really great by the way. Move, oh, okay, I haven't seen that one, but that's moving over to like the big genre movies, she mm-hmm. also does this great thing in Bumblebee mm-hmm. and, well, not, and into the Spider-Verse, also great into the Spider-Verse. But she really she really took Bumblebee to a place that, to be fair, Sheila Beef was never going to take it. <laughs> like, she gave you that person. You were like, oh, I kind of care about this person. They look right. like they're really interacting with this giant robot. You actually, like, think she's, like, actually interacting with one. Wow, that's some pretty good acting. <laughs> uh, you might want to look at that, Megan Fox. Um, anyway, sorry. But, I, uh, but mainly, I'm interested in because I do believe it sort of parallels the ScarJo and the Jeremy Renner situation in a couple ways. I don't know. I just want to throw this out there. Like, to me, Haley Seinfeld is kind of a big deal already. So she probably doesn't need... I mean, I just wonder what kind of conversation happened where it's like, do you want to sign on to being in these Marvel movies? Because Kate Bishop is one of those characters, to me, is a big, also a big deal. She's the character you're going to want to have around for the like the next eight movies, I wonder. If that's gonna oh, happen, yeah, it her has and to. Uh, Yelena are gonna be the replacements for you know, Hawkeye and Black yeah, yeah, and that makes sense. But to, in all fairness, to um, you know Florence Pugh, she is not as big a star as Haley Seinfeld. So I'm just talking in the uh, contract yeah. level. Like she, yeah, I mean, we we all know in Marvel there are a few people who are all the Chris's basically were roped in when they were up and coming and Not got sure. signed on you don't think chris chris evans is already really like well okay known. chris evans is kind well of but i think but i think to your point like chris evans even chris pratt like they were famous ish but they yeah. were not they were not chris evans chris pratt 
All I'm getting Marvel. essentially is that. Oh, well, my in- family is a Chris Evans uh, family <laughs> house. I'm sorry. Like, I feel like. Yeah, no. so, for <laughs> this, in my this is family, not Chris Evans slander. This is not Chris Evans slander. I think generally. Chris Evans from the beginning. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, that's fine. But I mean, my only point is like, there was that dynamic, like Scarjo and also Jeremy Rimmer got roped into basically being Hawkeye and Black Widow forever for way too long, and they got sick of it eventually because they but were think, already pretty well established. Stars. I was, yeah, I, that was I the just, difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just, I, so I just wonder how it'll. I just wonder how it'll be like because I because just in that trailer you can see how much it's going to be great that Haley Steinfeld is yeah. Kate Bishop. You can just see it's just going to be great. <laughs> to your point though, right? Like <laughs> y- the, they're clearly at, in some fashion setting up a young Avengers type team. We've talked about this throughout the Disney shows, right? Like Patriot was in Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. Uh, Wiccan and Speed were in WandaVision. There's a new giant girl in, or I guess her name's not giant girl, whatever Ant-Man's not Cassie. You know, Cassie, she's a, she's yeah. a new Avenger. Stature. They, Stature, that's her name. They recast her for the next yeah. Ant-Man movie. Miss Marvel's coming. Like there, there's clearly a young Avengers team building. To your point, Dominic, of that team, Haley Seinfeld's the biggest star. Absolutely. Like I yeah. can't even name who's who the actors are for the other roles, but Haley yeah. Steinfeld is a huge star. She has her own, she you know, she she's an A-lister, she, she leads her own Emily movies. Dickinson. She's like on Apple TV as Dickinson. So, like, to your point, I wonder, is she going to like be resigned to a young Avengers movie, or is she going to be Hawkeye in Avengers 5? Right? Like, I think that's the that's where she is in the pantheon of the Young Avengers. What's I'm also very cool? Curious. Didn't they cast America Chavez? America Chavez is in yeah. the Doctor Strange movie, isn't it? Yes, isn't she? Yes, yes. Oh, yes. cool. Yeah. And she comes from the Netflix show um, Baby, uh, the Babysitters Club, which mm. is really great. Uh, she's really fun on that. Her name is uh, Zochi Gomez, I think. If I'm getting, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see. So I want to see Kate Bishop in America Chavez. In her I know her name is Sochi. Um, yeah. she, I think she is a little bit younger though than uh, uh, Haley Steinfeld. So that's the only thing because I know there's some people who ship America, yeah, yeah. Kate, but I think Sochi is like still like a teenager, underage teenager, like and, a legit teenager. Yes, and Haley Steinfeld is like in her twenties. So just so people are pre-aware of that. <laughs> Before you start shipping them. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be kind of weird. Um, well, I just think they have a cool relationship in the comics. It would just yeah, be cool to see do. them interact in, in the movies. So, and... Yeah, I hope they have the same, like, at least friend, level of friendship. You know, I just am kind of like, oh, people don't ship it because she's well, so, yeah. well, she's you like can... a minor still. I think she at least looks like she's still a minor, so. Yeah. So <laughs> that's, and it, that's Hawkeye. Okay. That was the one thing that we didn't get a chance to talk about last week and and i'm very excited it comes out in november Mm -hmm. right in time for the holidays it's got that christmas vibe which is really cool the other thing that we have to talk about since it's hard knock life we have to talk about the disney show that came out this week and this week's episode of what if i'm not going to put it up there with like the best episode so far i didn't think it was to the level of the doctor strange episode or the star lord episode but it was a strong episode it was basically a redux of the first Iron Man movie. What did we think of the Killmonger episode of What If? It was it was really good, but then I was trying to like, I guess I was going like, well, then how old would he have been when that actually happened? Is there are they changing their ages? Because like, mm. I don't know. I I feel like because if Chad, no, oh my god, if um Michael B. Jordan is like only a couple years older than me, I was like eighteen when the first Iron Man movie came out. So I'm just like, he was probably like 20, 21. So how would he be that decorative of like a vet by that? You know what I mean? That's what I was thinking in my head. So mm-hmm. I'm like, and I know it's like, oh, we're talking but, about. Iron but they Man. were very aware of the timeline because they made Shuri a little girl in the show too, right? Like, because I'd, I'd read some people complaining that Shuri, you know, how 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 did he get one over on Shuri? But like Shuri's like eight years old in this timeline, right? Like she hasn't, <laughs> she's not the Shuri of the movie yeah. Black Panther. This is like. But, eight to ten years prior but but yeah i didn't even yeah. think about like For t'challa so and eric being age. being younger they're, yeah their age is the only one that i was like they would have been a lot younger both of them <laughs> so either they're born like you know they're technically they're born age. as full men yeah, yeah no, you know what i mean like In i'm like weird magic push way. their 
age differently and stuff because it's obviously a different universe so they are not the same ages um that they would have been in the like when our current uh, the actual the sacred timeline quote unquote that we know of so i don't know that's the only thing that really threw me i was like wait a minute how does this work but it was fun i did it did make me just now think about you know talking about timelines and stuff Mm -hmm. did t'challa drink the purple the what is it the heart-shaped herb uh-huh before civil war yes because yeah. he says it, so he already had powers past to warrior to warrior so he yeah. was already he was black panther he wasn't king yet but he, he wasn't was, king but he yet, had the powers of black panther because that's, his dad was old oh, yeah. that's an interesting point i forgot i guess he, yeah yeah he talks about that he said it is a mantle passed from warrior to warrior he did not say from king to king mm. yeah. oh and, and now okay and then in black panther the ceremony we see is not to become Black Panther is to become king, and that was that's. So I was I was just getting a little and, confused. Between. And also, yes, multiple people can eat heart shaped herbs at the same time. Well, sure, same, sure, same sure. thing happens. Yeah. Right, right, which is good. It's 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 uh, democratic. Right. Okay. No, I was just, I was just for a second I was like, wait, wait a minute. How did T'Challa already have the powers of Black Panther too? But yeah, that's because of that. And he might I have do- been Black Panther for a while because T'Challa had was already pretty old. Yeah, I think that's that. I that to me was a little bit like okay, I get that, I get, but I was just like they would have been a lot younger though, especially Killmonger, and that's what I'm saying. Like unless they're obviously born in different years because of like this is a different universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that. Well, it's clearly a different universe because uh, Rhodey looks like Don Cheadle. Oh, I know, like (laughs) Don Cheadle the whole time. Yeah, which was kind of cool. It was like when they had a uh, Mark Ruffalo show up in the Incredible Hulk in the Ant Man episode, Emmy Award nominee Don <laughs> for all mm-hmm. ninety seconds. I think it's like they they timed it. He has ninety one seconds of screen time in Falcon and Winter Soldier, the entire series Falcon and, and he, Winter Soldier. And he got nominated. And he got nominated for best guest actor. <laughs> but, but wait, was that the category that Quicksilver won? Or I, no, I, no, I no. He was supporting actor. Supporting. Oh, okay. no, I think they did all of those ones at uh, the Creative Emmys for Is like, that right? like guests. yeah, the guest actors. The guest actors was probably all part of Creative Emmys because, like, I know voiceover stuff was also on Creative Emmys, and like production design and mm-hmm. sound mixing and all of that was on the Creative Emmys side. Yeah. Wow. So I know Mandalorian and WandaVision won some of the creative I mean, it's just so, so people know, but they just don't air those because they think we don't care about those right, categories. Right. Oh yeah. No, they are really just about those top actor categories, which is even more like this kind of like incestuous like yeah. classic class of soup that they do. It's ridiculous. But yeah, I was surprised Shadow was back again for another episode. No, he's like all over the series. Like they yes, they, they didn't yes. tell us that you know they just hinted at the star lord episode but like hmm. chadwick did a lot of voiceover he did and i'm just i it's nice that we still have like you know more chadwick to look forward to but then when this is over like you know that's really it really is that's it but it's nice each time too it's not- really sad because like in the first one you know he's he doesn't die but like there's that whole eulogy for him because wakanda thinks he's dead and yeah. so, like the real world parallel is, it hits you in the heartstrings because we lost Chadwick. And then in the zombie episode, like, I mean, he he ultimately dies because the world yeah. dies, but like he's being fed to Wanda, and it's a little kind of like off putting in a in a sense because yeah. Chadwick's no longer with us. And now in this one, he full on dies. Like, there's a coffin, yeah, you know, scene too, where which again, they probably like, feel so bad about like. Why we gotta keep killing T'Challa? Yeah, yeah, they probably feel really bad. Like they're like, shit, he died, and we did all this stuff with his character. Yeah, and, you know. But yeah, I I still agree that the Doctor Strange and the uh, T'Challa Star Lord episode are probably the best so far. Um, I'm excited to see though the rest of where it goes and when they all like team up because now they're showing the event, the original Avengers shot that we remember from the first movie with the characters we've been introduced with uh over these episodes so mm. i'm interested to see how it all leads up to that yeah well the other cool thing is that like again they did bring back many of the original actors as you said t'challa is voiced john by Kenny. chadwick they brought back john Kenny to play t'chaka they brought back angela bassett to play ramonda which was cool that we, we learned general. that she's a general she's the uh i guess she's still general in that in that timeline because she's yeah. leading the Dora into battle 
And which is, which again, maybe to your point, this is like eight to 10 years earlier. So Ramonda may be more agile mm-hmm. than she was by the time of Infinity War. Cause that's another criticism I read. Like if Ramonda was a uh, Dora Milaje, why wasn't she fighting the battle of Wakanda? It's like, well, she's much older 10 years later than, than she was yes. probably. Uh, they brought back, of course, Michael B. Jordan to play Killmonger. Mm-hmm. The actress they got to play, Tony and Pepper, were really good. They weren't going to the Paltrow and And they brought RDJ. back, I don't know if, if anyone cares about this fact. I was really excited when I saw her name in like the credits before as uh, Leslie Bibb. Um, oh, it was Christina she, Everhart. Yes. And um, I don't know if people know she's actually married to Sam Rockwell. So I was really excited. That's why I always love their scene in Iron Man 2 when they're kind of like, where he's like trying to flirt with her and she's just like, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> and she's been um, she's been in several of the What If episodes, all voiced by Leslie Bibb. So it's kind of cool I that like, that. yeah, she's, she's a- more than one. I just noticed on this one that it was her. I was like, oh, Leslie Bibb. She's Bibb. in the Doctor Strange episode. She's the one who announces Christine Palmer's death on the tv okay. that's actually christine everhart because she's the uh in universe you know like news person yeah that, uh, i wonder if they're gonna lives. bring her back on like in the movies because i Maybe. like really bib i used I'm, to like the show that she was on in the cw and they fucking canceled it it's called popular and it ends with, <laughs> i don't remember if it was her or her best friend character on the show one of them gets hit by a car at the end of the episode and that's how it ends and i don't know and well, that's like it's it that's that's the end of the end the show got canceled and <laughs> it's Terrible. been like 20 years and i think about this all the time every oh. time i think of leslie bibb i think about that and i just want to know what was gonna happen you know if we ever so get an opportunity out. to interview leslie bibb for the nerds of color i'll have you do the interview and then you can always end it with and who died in popular yeah. <laughs> and you can I, finally have that mystery so i need to know i've literally it has been on my mind for 20 years <laughs> it's so bad i've been thinking about that since pretty much i was in elementary school wow <laughs> Uh, yeah the no that show came on when i was dangling like, I threads say, like, <laughs> grade and i just every time i see her i'm like she's on the show and i tell everyone so yeah if you hear this story more than once guys i'm so sorry <laughs> that's, all good. No, that's important that's how i feel about the v television series because i'm old or the the original not the uh reboot with marina backer yeah that. no not the one before that because i'm so so old i am old as well and i remember right. that very yeah. i wouldn't say fondly because it scared the shit out of me when i was a little Wait, kid what show is v- this a, the, the first v they were mini series okay, and then there was a tv show and then the, the tv show just ended abruptly with a big cliffhanger that obviously should have gone to next season but they didn't so it just ends with a terrible v- cliffhanger like v for like v for vendetta no no v no for vendetta. V, the, v the v a bunch of lizard lizards. people who are uh disguised as humans story. Uh... and then when i was a kid there was like they had trading cards and I used to have them. I don't know why, because the show scared the shit out of me. But one of the trading cards had a picture of a guy with his face torn off with the lizard face coming out from underneath. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's, and I, like, I don't know why I had this card, but I had it. And it's like, I look at it. Those and are, be it was kind of traumatic. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. And then like, there, I remember the episode when the lady was having a baby. And then, that like, was so gross. Her, her lover was one of the alien invaders. I don't think she knew has one of these half lizard babies it's really gross it's very For 1980s gross. tv it's really, <laughs> it's really a lot but uh, the other thing i remember about it dominic and um, thank you for taking me down this v memory hole but the the <laughs> guns the guns the prop guns that the uh aliens carried were actually robotech guns the toy robotech guns because i had one what yeah they like they just went out and bought like robotech you know was a oh, was an okay. anime back in the 80s and okay. they would have like, you know, toy guns that had the Robotech logo on it. And I had one and I remember watching the show and they were all pull out their guns. It's like, that looks just like the toy ray gun I have. And I realized yeah. that the prop department just went to Toys R Us and bought like a hundred Robotech totally guns. Totally makes sense. And like painted them black. <laughs> and painted them black. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's the deep V Robotech crossover. I never <laughs> thought of that. Um, but yeah. So anyway, uh, it's not quite like the car crash thing, but the in the in the in the series finale like the supreme alien leader gets on a shuttle and then the hero stows away on the ship to them and they just go off and then the series ends you're like what the fuck they're going to the alien (laughs) planet what What, you know what the hell is gonna happen and they realized in 1982 they didn't have the budget to show what the alien planet right that's what they couldn't actually get to the alien planet (laughs) anyway that was a 
divergence. No, it's fine. <laughs> that's I my nerd you. popping. That's your nerd popping? <laughs> Remembering <laughs> thinking, thinking about V in relation to your car crash uh, <laughs> obsession. Uh, we all have these dangling threads. Yeah. Yes, that one is mine. So if someone out there knows, tell me the answer. I would like to know what happened. <laughs> Do you have anything else that's a nerd popping for you as well, Brittany? Or is oh, it just actually, your obsession with the populars? <laughs> I actually do. Um, I watched Love and Monsters on Hulu, which stars Dylan O'Brien and Jessica Henwick, by the way. And it's shout very, out Jessica Henwick. Yeah, it's a really cute movie where um it's like a post-apocalyptic where basically like frogs and other insects and whatnot um because of some meteor they've turned all like giant and gross and big and they will eat you and he is trying to get to the colony that he's staying at to go find his girlfriend from eight years ago who is uh Jessica Henwick and he's trying to travel across like this you know toxic waste whatever land to go find her and it's really really a good movie um Michael Roker is also in it for a little bit um, I, also, the little girl who played young Gamora is in it and uh, actually spends uh. time with like Michael Roker's character because like they're like, that's how like Donald Bryan meets them like they're together and it's really cute. Um, and then I also watched Malignant, mm-hmm. which is a James Wan movie on HBO Max. Yeah. That movie was weird as shit. <laughs> but it, was good. it was really good, really trippy. I loved it. It felt very like campy. Like, yeah, yeah. Campy. That's what I've read. It's like very unlike the conjuring movies it's it's completely yeah, like other like, 360 if this was made in like the like from anywhere from the 80s to the early 2000s i'm like yeah this makes sense that has that vibe it feels like that type of like it would be from that like era type. it was it was fun though worth watching if you can withstand horror films <laughs> yeah those were my, my nerd poppins awesome dominic anything other than v no then i'm good <laughs> do, you have a, do you have a nerd popping do you have- well uh, two things uh i you know we were talking about hamilton earlier and pro shot musicals and they just released on apple tv plus come from away which is a which is a really cool musical about you know we're, we're just a week away f- we're, we're a week past the 9-11 anniversary and come from away is a musical about an uh, airport in newfoundland where a lot of the planes had to land when huh. the uh, skies shut down on 9-11 and it's about the story of all of these people coming together from all over the world and just experiencing 9-11 but also it's, experiencing it's, community it's pro shot stage yeah music. pro shots the original broadway cast and it's on apple tv plus come from way and i'd never seen it before in fact apple tv it's on apple tv plus right now this minute and i i'd never seen the show we were supposed to go see it when mm-hmm. it was in town but we actually got rid of our tickets because avengers was opening the same day so we ended up going to see Avengers Endgame instead of, which is weird because like a, a Broadway Places. show, you could, you, well, you, you only see one time, There's but like, like a-, a movie, you can go back <laughs> like Saturday, but we were like, no, we have to go see Endgame. And so we um, didn't go see Come From Away. There is definitely someone who is like anti-MCU and who's like, uh, people always like pick the MCU over like, you know, smaller indie stuff and blah, blah, blah and real art. And then you're like that person who was like, <laughs> <laughs> Broadway <laughs> show that's only going to be in town one day <laughs> or a movie yeah. I could go see tomorrow. <laughs> like, uh, someone is probably really like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm that guy. Well, now I've seen Come From Away and, and, and I'm glad it just took me three years to get to it, but it's really good. I- you should check it. Have you listened to the cast album? I haven't, all? but like I want to watch it since because I do think that we need more pro shot musicals. And there's some yes. people who like to complain, like, oh, well, why don't you just go see mm-hmm. it in person? Or they should make an actual movie, movie musical. And I'm just like, well, you don't realize some people don't have access to go to live theater. Yeah, most like, people, <laughs> like. Even if it's the cheaper, like, you know, touring cast ones, some people still don't have access to live theater. I wish people would understand, like, accessibility is why some people prefer pro shot versions of the original cast so they can see it, too. Like, this is another way to include people. And think about people who have disabilities, too, who, like, you know, they may have the money to go see it, but it might not be something that they're comfortable with, like, trying to deal with the hassle of, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so like we need more pro shot, like musicals and plays. Like, we and need- the same thing is that like just because you have access to the pro shot filmed versions, mm-hmm. it doesn't take away from the 
oh yeah in-person experience people are still going to buy tickets they're going to still want to go see it on broadway in the theater but having the it's it's the same thing with like the hbo max and streaming and in theaters option right just because it's in the streaming platform doesn't mean you're not people aren't going to some people will still want to see it in the theater i will say this seeing a live performance is a different experience oh yeah absolutely 100 percent. and everyone if you can should try to experience it if they can but to your point it should also be available on some sort of platform that's accessible to people and and then it would also cut down on bootlegs because like every yeah. every broadway musical is available on youtube if you know how to like search for slime it, tutorials yes. <laughs> yes. right and then and so i've seen my share of broadway musicals from a shitty cell phone you know the pro shot will eliminate the the need to do that right now that yeah. hamilton is accessible on disney plus no one is going to youtube to look up the shitty no exactly. amateur videos and and people are still lining up to see book hamilton i want one of book of mormon i don't know if they because they well no every every I musical know. is pro shot like there is a pro shot version of every musical that's on broadway they're just, the not released to, they're just but not released they're just not released because of actors equity right that's yeah. one of their last frontiers as rightly it should be because sure. that that is the actors um mm-hmm. stick sticking up for themselves which in, i mean in a tangled way i mean yeah i was gonna say like I, it, it, releasing it should also pay actors their you know a lot fair share labor and uh yeah no i just think that we should have it um because i really want to see book of mormon with the original cast mm. yeah i would like to see Not a bootleg uh, one i would like to see the original Adina Menzel and Christina Chenoweth, Wicked. I yes. would like to see. What else would I like to see? Oh, I'd like to see In the Heights. I'd like to see the original cast of In the Heights. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What else? I have I? seen Kristen Chenoweth though as uh, Glenn Dub, just because she was at um, the Pantages the first time I had saw it. Oh wow! Was, but it was Eden Espinosa who was. Um, Alphaba. So Eden is like if you really follow Broadway, people know Eden, and Eden is so talented. Oh my God, that woman can sing. Mm. So yeah, it was really cool, like seeing that. But I mean, I I've seen like, I've seen Hades Town with the mm-hmm. original cast, but I would love a pro shot version of that too. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Broadway nerds, nerd now. Yeah. That's hard knock life. <laughs> How can people find you on the internet, Brittany? You can find me at Hi Brittany Monet, and also you can follow at Naomi Podcast to get the several streams of all the other podcasts I'm doing or have done. Basically, that's the shorthand version of that. Dominic, oh, I am at Dama D O M A H on Instagram or Twitter, and also I have a YouTube channel at MelancholyBall dot com. Melancholy Ball. You can find me on Twitter at the Real Chow, the underscore Real underscore Chow. And- Follow me on Instagram at Real Keith Chow. Follow the Nerds of Color at the Nerds of Color. Go to hardknockmedia.com to find this and all of the podcasts. Subscribe, download, like, do all the things, rate and review. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the Nerds of Color. And give us an email, the Nerds of Color at gmail.com. And we may read it on air. Who knows? You have to email us first, though. <laughs> and uh, that's it for this week. Until next time. Ted Lasso, you're a godsend. <laughs> I thought Dominic was going to shit on hacks one more time. <laughs> no, I, I, no, let's leave it on a positive note, Ted Lasso.